Let's continue learning how to use QRadar by just uh, looking at the rules. Let's look at this one, 9-11, uh, potential data loss. So we open that rule, and again, we can look at the things that we showed before, but we can, we, we said that in this set of tutorial, we're going to show you how to look at those by looking at the rules. So let's look at the rules that fire. Well, several rules fire in this particular case. So let's look at the first one, large output transfer high rates. So let's see, let's understand why do we say that. Well, we have, uh, you know, it's detected on a local system. Why, why this is large outbound transfer? Well, because we have specified when the number of source bytes is greater than, you know, 20,000. That's around, what, uh, two, two megabytes uh, uh, of data. Well, that's that's not a small chat. That, that's some probably some files going out. And there are at least five flows, activity again, on the same IPs and, and port in 12 minutes. So that is something that is both also not only big but also intense, high rate. And is a local to remote and is mostly outbound, the, the balance, which means that, 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 that it's more stuff that is probably going out into the internet. Does this mean that this is a bad thing? Well, not necessarily. And actually you can add more rules in here to tune this up uh, and to make it more specific to your environment. But you see how easy it is uh, to actually do this. Uh, let's look at some other rules that uh, that actually fire. Well, we have this one. <laughs> we have a local scanner detected. So somebody within the in our network is actually scanning the net. Let's look at uh, suspicious activity, potential data loss, and see what the significance of this rule fire. Well, look at that. There's a database login, you know. Uh, in order with the same source IP followed by a sub, uh, subnet or at least one of these, you know, the policy that we saw before. So you see how you combine those those two things. So, you know, this explains you why is the significance of this particular uh, incident. And then you can do as we have done in previous videos. You can go and do events and flows and continue your investigation. Back to all other offenses and keep on learning how easy this system is uh, to manage. What other things we can look in here? Let's look at this other, since we're in the themes of potential data loss, let's look at this one, 995, potential data loss. Again, display the rule. And uh, we have events and flows and all that, but we want we actually want to see the, the, the actual rule that, that fire in here. Okay, and let's look at this rule. Policy, create offenses for all chat traffic based on flows. So. Let's look at that one, and it says, you know, the, the context is in a local system from local to remote. Okay, application is chat, this is our IRC, and matches any one of the building blocks. And we haven't talked about building blocks, but building blocks, think of it as a kind of a rule that allows us to be more complex rules, basically a rule that doesn't have an action. How, where do we see those building blocks? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Here on the same offenses uh, side, we can click here on the... Uh, actually rules have all the rules and, and building blocks so we're gonna search for a particular building block and the group was uh, what was that word was uh, category definition if I remember correctly so let's look at all the all the rules we can actually go further and put the name of the rule that we are actually looking for in here but you should click on it to, to see them all Let's scroll down and look for successful communication. That was the building block that we were using, and here it is. Successful communication. Let's see, you know, where is it that this building block fires upon? Well, you know, when the, the ratio of the package is greater than 80 on the source and destination, this what basically means this is a meaningful chat. You know, is there some actually some can be a command and control, can be a normal chat, but the, this is a way of in the indicating the building block that there's a successful uh, RC traffic. It's not a, it's not a, a, a false alarm. So here it shows you, you know, how we can use building blocks into the creation of rules. Keep on looking at a few more offenses. So let's go back to all the offenses. And we're going to see another one here. It could be, for example, 
which is a good one. This one, potential successful exploit preceded by attack. I mean, this is one that shows very nicely by looking at the flows, how Curator detects the sequence of those actions. So we got local scanner, local peer-to-peer -peer detected, you know, exploit success by suspicious host activity. You see all this sequence of, of events, say, you know, that's what give that relevance so high. So this is this is something, uh, something actually uh, uh, pretty pretty important. Always have to you know go ahead and start displaying the rules and so forth. Like you can you can go as before and look at the you know, uh, for example, let's look at the events here. Let's see what 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 are what are the events uh, that led to this. Um, this attack. So we see a bunch of here. Let's look at, uh, for example, this one: potential peer-to-peer -peer traffic or voice over IP detected. So we open that one, and here's the rule and uh, the that particular event. Sorry, and then you know we see the the we see the actual uh, custom rules that we're firing in here. So let's look at the first one: recon potential peer-to-peer -peer or voice over IP. And see how this rule is constructed. So look at that. So, okay, again, if that's the the apply on local, not on global. For example, this is on my local network. And notice this is interesting. This is we are saying when the flows or events match any one of the of the of the following. You know, when when not. Basically, what we are saying is that if the servers do these type of things. You know, the, you know, show this type of traffic, that's a normal thing. When you have a desktop or something that is not a server doing that traffic, that type of traffic, that is what I want this uh, rule to fire. And that's what we are putting that and not, you know, this building block, as we show building blocks before, this is what I have uh, all my servers defined. And when, when the content is local to remote, when it is going out, so you want to see if, 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 a, if one of your desktop, for example, is being uh, compromised and is sending data outside, uh, and, you know, and you get, you know, an additional building block for recognition events and suspicious, you can, you can actually go ahead and investigate this, this one, this one uh, further. And, you know, that, that the stuff is, uh, is not happening only once, but it's happening uh, uh, intensely more than 50 destination ports within three minutes. So again, it's very easy to build very complex logic. You don't need to know anything about the tool. All you need to do is know IP lingo and do some clicking and you can tune up uh, all these uh, built-in policies to fit your uh, network.